Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will talk about the diagnosis of primary amenorrhea. We have list of tests for the diagnosis of primary amenorrhea and those include first of all the different blood tests like FSH LH level, serum prolactin, 17 alpha hydroxyprogesterone level, 5 alpha reductase level, testosterone level and dehydroapiandrosterone level. The other test is that the pelvic ultrasound, then the karyotyping and advanced imaging modalities like CT scan and gonadal biopsy. Now slowly and gradually I will tell you which test is needed to be done in the evaluation of primary amenorrhea case. So if a patient comes with primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristics, we have two groups of patients. First is the group with the normal height and second is the group with the short height. So in the group of patient with the normal height, we will check the FSH and LH levels and the patient may have low FSH and LH level or the patient may have high FSH and LH level. In case of low FSH and LH levels, the differential diagnosis include isolated GnRH deficiency, olfactive genital syndrome and hyperprolactinoma. But when we have high FSH and LH levels, the differential diagnosis include premature ovarian failure, gonadal dysgenesis, which include the karyotype of 46XX and 46XY, and galactosemia. In a group of patients with a short height, uh, we have to look for the associated features. In some patients, the associated features may be absent, and in another group of patients, we may have the uh, certain associated features like web neck is there and increased angle is there, means the increased carrying angle. So when we have the associated features absent, then in that case, we have to check the FSH and LH levels that is usually low. And in that case, we advise CT scan in order to diagnose the intracranial lesions. But when we have these associated features, then we do the karyotyping to diagnose different conditions like 46, uh, 45XO, 45XO and 46XX, 45XO and 46XY. Now coming to another group of patients in which we have primary amenorrhea with the normal secondary sexual characteristics. In them we do ultrasound and in certain group of patients the uterus is present on ultrasound and in another group of patients the uterus is absent on ultrasound. So when the uterus is present we need to measure the LH and FSH levels. There might be an out, uh, outflow obstruction in one group of the patient and normal anatomy in another group of patient. So normal anatomy with increased prolactin indicate prolactinoma and when LH and FSH ratio is high that include polycystic ovarian disease. When LH and FSH levels are high that indicate the resistant ovarian syndrome. When LH FSH ratio is normal and prolactin is normal as well that, in, that indicate the constitutional development or the constitutional delay. In the group of the patient in which the uterus is absent on ultrasound, we do karyotyping and if we get the karyotype of 46XX along with the absent uterus and vagina that indicate MRKH. But if the karyotype indicate 46XX along with the absent uterus and vagina that indicate the androgen insensitivity syndrome. Now what tests are needed to be done in order to diagnose the heterosexual development? First is that of hydrox 17 hydroxyprogesterone. If that level is high, it indicates the congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And uh, along with the pelvic ultrasound, if we have increased testosterone, that indicates the androgen producing ovarian tumor. And if the CT scan show adrenals tumor along with a high DHEA level, high testosterone level, that indicate adrenal tumor. The gonadal biopsy is helpful to diagnose the true hermaphrodites. Now these tables indicate the different causes of primary amenorrhea along with the uh, appropriate diagnostic tests. Like we have a group of disorder in which there is primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristics and short stature. In that case, if we have hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction and the conditions like hydrocephalus is suspected, then we do CT scan for that. For craniopharyngioma, we do CT scan. For panhypopituitarism, we do CT scan. Certain group of patients may have ovarian failures and in the Turner syndrome diagnosis, we do the karyotyping for mosaic Turner, karyotyping for mixed gonadal distances, karyotyping is helpful. Another group of patients may have primary amenorrhea with the absent secondary sexual characteristics and the normal stature. So if there is a hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction like hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism like conditions, 
and we are suspecting isolated GnRH deficiency, then GnRH level would be helpful. Coleman syndrome is diagnosed by GnRH and LHFSH levels. Hyperprolactinemia by the serum prolactin level. Excessive exercise, weight loss, and anorexia nervosa can affect the hormonal levels like LHFSH. For ovarian failure also, along with the LHFSH levels, we do uh, the karyotyping in order to diagnose the different conditions like uh, trogonadal dysgenesis and for premature menopause, we do LH and FSH level and for galactosemia, the prolactin level might be helpful. We have a group of disorders in which we, uh, there is the normal uh, secondary sexual characteristics and in them, we may have certain anatomical abnormalities like imperfect hymen, transverse vaginal septum, absent vagina and functioning uterus, absent vagina and non-functioning uterus. In all these cases, the ultrasound is very helpful. Androgen sensitivity by ultrasound, resistance ovary syndrome not only by ultrasound but also hormonal level, also polycystic ovary disease by the ultrasound plus hormone level, prolactinoma by the serum prolactin level. The congenital adrenal hyperplasia is diagnosed by increased 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone level and 5 alpha reductase level is ch uh, checked in order to diagnose the condition of 5 alpha reductase deficiency. And ovarian adrenal tumors are, are diagnosed not only by the CT scans but also by the DHE levels and the serum testosterone levels. True hermaphrodite is diagnosed by doing the gonadal uh, biopsy. And the constitutional development diagnosis is purely the clinical one. So that brings us to the end of my presentation. I want to complete it with this quote that any goal worth completing is not going to be easy. If you think living your dream is simple and you are entitled to it, you will never achieve it. The first step is dedicating yourself to a goal and knowing that it will not be easy to complete it, but it will be worth it. So thank you so much. I wish you best of luck. Allah Hafiz.